Hello there internet, it's Mogwai here and I got another video for you guys today and today I'm going to be playing some Teferi. Happy April Fool's Day. Except I'm actually playing some Teferi. <laughs> We're playing some 2K18, as you can tell these uh, googly eyes right here. You know, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast, well played. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint, like I forgot it was even April Fool's and uh, you know. That would have been cute, but no, we're, we're actually playing the fairy here with Dominaria. But we're playing a different deck rather than, you know, the typical Esper control. It's it's fun. I, I don't know. It's funny to say typical because uh, back in the day, uh, December last year, actually, like only like four months ago, uh, I remember I made it to Diamond with Esper control. And that was kind of like my edgy competitive deck because Jeskai was just superior in all ways. And now uh, the tides have turned. Now Jeskai is like the edgy version of control. While Esper is obviously the more mainstream version because they got Kaya's Wrath, they got uh, Mortify, and they also got the likes of Cry the Carnarium. You know, they got a bunch of new toys that enabled the uh, Esper to just be more dominant and efficient control deck. But that doesn't mean you should uh, disregard uh, Jeskai, especially this variant of Jeskai, which I really like. Like I said, it made it to the top four of uh, a Grand Prix that occurred in Kyoto quite recently. And. The deck list is very well built, in my opinion. It's built around not only Teferi, but Niv, Mizzet, Parun as your win conditions, right? Niv is a 4 of in this deck. And the main, the main reason why he is, is because we're also running 4 copies of Treasure Map, which enable us to ramp. Uh, Treasure Map is a good alternative to Search for Escanta because it is not vulnerable to Mortify. So if you're facing a mirror match when it comes to control... Uh, Treasure Map will avoid Mortify or Removal and will only be vulnerable to the likes of Hostage Taker, which they won't generally want to be playing against you because you barely have any creatures whatsoever, right? So, Treasure Map uh, enables us to not only avoid Mortify, but also Ramp. And ramping can be very important because being able to play Niv and having some mana in the back to uh, go for Dive Down or Spell Pierce or even an Absorb if you've ramped enough to uh, protect them for one turn. If you want to tap with Niv, in a deck like this, that generally means good game because you have so much spells, or so many spells, you have so much good English, Miguel, that uh, you just end up drawing and refueling and drawing and dealing damage, and you can basically have a you have a good shot at, at just dealing with your opponent in one turn with this. Also, the fact that we're running Deafening Clarion not only gives us a very powerful AOE sort of uh, resource, right, that has been, you know, the main reason why people would play uh, Jeskai back in the day over Esper, even though now yeah, it gets overshadowed a little bit by Kaya's Wrath and Cry of the Carnarium. But in this case, not only does it enable us to board wipe early in the game, but it also enables us to give Niv a uh, lifelink and just, you know, make a huge comeback potentially versus uh, more aggro focused decks. And uh, that is the deck list right there. It's a very well designed, uh, well optimized in general, just uh just got control list that i think uh, has a lot of potential and uh, hopefully i can pilot as good you know as the original <laughs> creator uh did in that tournament right he made it really far uh it's, it's cool to see like uh, a deck list like this that, that's been completely forgotten uh make it so far up in such a big tournament right like it's, it's a very big statement to make even though it did fall in, in the top four i believe it, it went down to maybe a gruel or i don't know i think it lost to some sort of aggro or 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 mid-range sort of build. I don't think it lost to uh, Mono Blue Tempo. I, I I don't recall exactly like how that tournament went, but uh, they had a really strong showing. And I like the sideboard a lot too. One of the main reasons why uh, Jeskai was so threatening back in the day is because it's a, con a control deck that could also sideboard in Legion War Boss because you're playing red, which means that in a control mirror, because your opponent wants to take out all of their removal, they leave themselves wide open for Legion of War Boss to just automatically win the game for you. So that's a very, very powerful resource to have in your sideboard for those matchups. But you're also running in uh, the Deputy Attention, which is very flexible, very good against uh, aggro decks. Well, mono white aggro, not mono red, and mono blue tempo, but also very key against uh, Wilderness Reclamation focused builds as well. And uh, triple Rekindling Phoenix and double Lyradon Bringer. So we have the option to just add in quite a bit of creature power. And that can really throw our opponents off, especially, like I said, if we're facing a control mirror. And that is the deck list right there. So without further ado, let's hop on to traditional ranked. And let's play some 2K18. As we got to climb all the way from diamond, sorry, platinum tour. Back up to mythic. And the climb starts now. So what do you, what do you guys think about the, uh, the War of the Sparks? Uh, spoilers, by the way. I'm very interested in these planeswalkers that can have 
ongoing effects. They kind of feel like enchantments in a way, but enchantments that, that can be removed through com uh, via combat. Sorry. I'm perhaps the most impressed by the uh, Ajani one. The Selenia Ajani. That, that one seems really good. Uh, this seems like a very a fantastic hand on it. So we got all Jeskai colors available to us. We got a treasure map on turn two, and we got... Is that an opt? I don't need I don't need to take any damage myself just yet. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> so he took one damage. Did he misclick? Like at this point, I'm just gonna believe that he misclicked, honestly. Uh could he have uh, I was thinking, could he have a negate? But it doesn't seem like that's the case. Okay. So he just blinked my uh, my thing away. All right, we're gonna pay two life again, and we're gonna try to um, obviously we're gonna play this one. And if he tries to counter spell us, we're just spell pierce it. Bitch! And uh, we deny those shenanigans. And now we're going to tap you, and we're going to start, you know, scrying before our card draw. Teferi is very nice to have, but I'd rather draw into... I'd rather just keep on drawing into lands, honestly. There we go. Alright, so we're going to, uh... I think we can just drop another... Could try to drop another one of these. Another treasure map, why not? We get to ramp like crazy, and if we draw into Niv Mizzet, then we can just get to work. Disinformation campaign. So it's the mere mid range, it seems. We're gonna tap you. And uh, I will be dropping Clarion. Keep it like this. I know I'm missing out on my chemist's insight. I think I would like to keep my opt. Nah, I'm gonna go for it. Let's uh, tap there. Call that a turn. Obviously, with double disinformation campaign, our our hand is uh, threatened. But uh, we're gonna let him go with that uh, thought erasure right there. Discard one of our chemisters. We're not gonna go for it because we have double chemisters inside. Like, there's no reason for us to go for it first because we could draw into something more key, like a Niv Mizzet, and we don't want him to discard that. So disinformation campaigns can be uh, quite rough. Um, I'm gonna go for it. Ah, fuck. Oh, I'm gonna do this. Because <laughs> we need to keep our nib visit. Alright. Paroon, your turn to shine. We still have the treasures to counterspell, something like an Eldest Reborn, for example. Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about with the treasure maps. That's the power.
I do this. And we're gonna smack him. See, if we had dive down here, we would be golden. I mean, he's already played two Thought Erasures. Like, Thought Erasure is literally the only thing that I'm, I'm worried about here. So, I'd rather play a uh, treasure map. Because I, I don't have the tools or the means to... Alright, that's fine. Alright, so I'm just going to play this. Tazeret! Uh, no oh, you're dead. <laughs> Tazeret, what the... F okay. Is he? Is that because he's playing Karn? Alright, that, that's a little bit confusing to me. I'm going to obviously add in two negates. Uh, what else do we want here? I, th I definitely think we go with Legion War Boss now to surprise him. He mu he's obviously running uh, Eldest Reborn, so I, I do also. I mean, he's going to be playing Ross's Contempt, so I don't think Rekindling Phoenix makes as much sense. We can lower down the Nivs at least by one. I don't think we need Deafening Clearing on. I don't think we need Justice Strike. Warned Warden. Sheevan Fire. Lava Coil could be good. I think uh, Lava Coil is the keeper here. I mean, I think we just go up to four nibs, considering how how many cards we've taken out. But I do want to keep the Lava Coils just in case. Maybe one Clarion, just in case he brings uh, Thief of Sanity and uh, one Rekindling Phoenix. Because I, I don't want to leave myself open to uh, his Thief of Sanity and lose to that, you know? Like, I want to make sure that I have answers, but I also want to make sure that I don't overcommit. So I, I, I think uh, I think this is good enough. I think two Lava Coils and, and one Deafening Clarion. I mean, if he if he plays uh, Thief of Sanity on turn three and I don't have an answer, like, it, it's... It's just kind of a risk that I have to... Like, that's one of the risks, you know, when facing... Like it's the same the same goes for my Legion War boss, right? Like if he takes out too much removal, he becomes vulnerable to it. And I, I like this hand because of this, but at the same time uh, I'm gonna keep I may only have two lands. If he's smart here, he takes the opt. Like taking the opt would really cripple me because I really rely on the opt to be able to draw into the land for Legion War boss. Yep. I don't know why he's stopping there. 
Yep, that that's a very clever play. And he punished me. That like that duress was really well uh timed there. Takes out an absorb. Interesting. I would not have taken the absorb. I would have taken the Legion War Boss. It's funny because he he makes a super good play discarding my my op right there, but then he commits the mistake of like discarding my absorb instead of the Legion War Boss. I can counter your your removal now. Like me setting this is win me the game. Like this is one of the power. Like this is one of the great things about Jeskai. Like in the in these sorts of matchups, it's, it's like I said, like Legion War Boss. Yeah, I'm not gonna go for the chemist's inside because I, I just want to protect this at, at all times. Like this this is game winning. And I don't need to go for chemisters and leave myself uh, wide open for like a instant speed uh, removal, like a process contempt or something. As long as I can always counter that. Easy win. Easy win. And it's all because he... It's his fault. There we go. <laughs> Ranked up real. But I, I can't stress enough. I cannot stress enough just how... Just how important that was like if he went for the thought erasure and took away my uh my legion war boss right there god damn it <laughs> these fucking eyes that game would have gone way longer it could have it been completely different but that's the power of this card in the sideboard for control matchups that is really something i wanted to highlight i mean in that series i highlighted what i was talking about with this deck like the power of treasure map with niv even though we kind of uh drew a little bit like our draws were kind of clunky because we drew a lot of removal versus a control matchup but it still worked out for us and uh, you guys saw like how how good uh, treasure map is with niv uh because of the ramp factor right and uh, also like the power of legion war boss in a control matchup uh, as a sideboard you know Card, even though my opponent could have prevented it there because uh, you know that that first dress was so key because Generally like the vast majority of people that I face in arena would not do that. They would just go like oh discard to fairy, you know, get rid of the fairy But you know, he, he looked at my hand and he was like, you know, he, he needs this op to be able to curve out properly Right, so I'm gonna disrupt that but then that thought erasure just kind of like made made little sense to me, but uh, yeah I, I want to play more with this deck. I want to feature it more. I, I think it's a very competitive, but also very interesting list. And I just really like Niv Mizzet as a win condition, as, as a card in general. Like, I want to play more decks with Niv Mizzet. Not only this, but also like Wilderness Reclamation and stuff. Like, I, I, I want to get good with those kind of decks, right? And this is a deck that I definitely want to dive into more. Pun intended. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, kill me. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit shorter today, but I am running a, a little bit uh, bad on time. You guys got a very long video yesterday. I got to get my stream going on. And uh, yeah, that's all day. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you tomorrow with more.